Hey, what's going on out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday afternoon with a special update on earthquake activity ramping up around the Taiwan area. It is about 2.12 here in the uh, PM Mountain Time in Colorado. That's where I'm currently at. I'll go over some details on that here in just a little bit. Look at all this earthquake activity ramping up here across the Taiwan area. Let me double check, make sure we got everything working looks good uh, we got something much bigger coming out here I feel uh, and I'll explain exactly why I kind of put out a little update earlier on my iPhone but uh, I can only show so much when I'm out there driving I wasn't driving but uh, had to pull over to do a short update so look at all these um, earthquakes just in the last 24 hours of uh, four point probably about 4.5 and above. We got about 27 earthquakes. And if you notice something here with what's going on, we're getting a, a larger sequence of events with each earthquake. Uh, in fact, we've seen two six pointers here about an hour or so ago. And um, the latest ones show, you know, a five pointer and a couple fours, but the increasing level of these uh, earthquakes and magnitudes and the multitude of quakes happening out here is indeed a little concerning. Now if we go back to the um, the first or second of this month, April, uh, of course they had a pretty decent sized earthquake out there, a 7.4 earthquake on the second of April and um, yeah we've seen a, a decent amount of aftershock activity on that same day almost immediately following that uh, 7.4 we've seen uh, at least one six pointer 6.4 lots of fives lots of fours and i'm sure some threes as well and that took place uh, for the majority of the day of the big earthquake and the day after uh, so we go to the third here's april 3rd and you notice the earthquakes here start getting a little bit more spread out. And that's typical uh, for an aftershock sequence. Most of the aftershock activity is going to occur within a couple days following, you know, as far as a larger scale potential, as far as uh, any bigger quakes, a couple days following the main quake. So that went on. There's the 8th, there's the 10th, uh, a couple days of here and there earthquake activity. But it seems like since yesterday, um, the 21st, uh, we started getting a swarm of earthquake activity out here. Things are really picking up um, more, more so today on the 22nd. That's why I feel we're seeing a, a little bit of potential here for some larger scale movement. I should say a lot of potential uh, for some larger scale movement out here. Again, just today, if you look at these earthquakes, 27 earthquakes here. And that's from the USGS. Of course, that's probably only about half the earthquakes that are going on out there. I pulled up the EMSC model here um, showing the earthquake activity in Taiwan, specifically in Taiwan, but this goes back years. It shows 1,332. It goes back many, many years, but we're just looking at today's time frame. Uh, these are the magnitudes over here. There's the sixes um, and the, um, the time since that earthquake struck. Here is the depth of that earthquake and of course the region is going to be Taiwan. Look at all these earthquakes here. This is way more than what the USGS is showing. Um, I'm not going to count these right now. I'll have to get a, a total count here at the end of this update video. But right about the 21st, we started to see things really kick off here. And if you look at these dates here, going back again towards the 1st or 2nd of April when that large quake struck, we should be seeing earthquake activity calm down, not ramp up weeks later in this area. Now, it does sit out here where this earthquake activity is taking place. Let me bring up the last 30 days once again. Um, this earthquake swarm that we're seeing is roughly within the same location of that 7.4, but a little bit further south. Notice that little migration going on down here. And this is a huge bend uh, in the plate boundary here. This is, is the uh, this is going to be the western edge of the Filipino plate, which is this area right here. Now there's a subduction zone over here across the Mariana Trench, Izu Trench, uh, the uh, subduction zone here where we see some big earthquakes. We'll check out the history here in a little bit on that uh, in this area. Uh, and also some um, 
there's subduction zones right in this area as well uh, and a couple other different strike slip faults here along this plate boundary uh, but this whole area is is reinforced not only from the pressure being applied from the pacific plate westward onto the filipino plate but also from the eurasia plate the eurasia plate moving off towards the southeast putting this area in the crunch zone and um, you know i feel like something bigger is coming up for these guys unfortunately uh, that looks like it may be the case here with the uh, sequence of earthquakes that are taking place today. All right, so here's historical earthquakes, right? This is the 7.4 that struck on the 2nd of April 20 days ago, right? Things should be calming down, not ramping up. Uh, prior to that, we had a 7.1, a little bit further south here along the plate boundary, uh, south of Taiwan. Um, within this area here, uh, it's mainly sevens, but there has been some larger earthquake activity, including this one back here. Now, this is why I think we're going to see a little bit, maybe a little bit something bigger here happening soon. Uh, 8.2 struck here, literally just to the west, or east, excuse me, east of where our ongoing earthquake activity has taken place, just to the east here. Now, one may think, well, that's a recent earthquake. That was back in 1920. Technically, that was not, um, a re well, I guess it's a somewhat of a recent earthquake, right? We're looking at um, just over 100 years. But think about the accumulated slip rate here across this area. How much pressure, how much momentum, how much strain is being applied in this area uh, from the plates that I just mentioned and their respected directions. It all puts this area in the crunch zone, and it doesn't take hundreds and hundreds of years to see a built up uh, enough area to see a large earthquake similar to the 8.2 we've seen back in 1920. It just makes sense there, just 100 years of stress being built up in this area, it's very possible, right? You start seeing these eight pointers out here, then we're gonna be talking about major uh, tsunami potential. So we gotta think about this and think uh, uh, of the potential for concern in larger scale activity uh, I, I wouldn't be saying this if this was just, you know, maybe a couple fours and the occasional five, but the the way these magnitudes are getting bigger as time goes on is telling me right here that something is getting ready to pop, I feel. So um, I'll just keep an eye, very close eye on the Taiwan area as that is looking likely that we'll see some further movement there in that region. Uh, aside from what we're seeing right now. Quite a bit of activity here across the Java Trench as well. Um, getting a little swarming going on here along this section of the plate boundary. This is a major subduction zone area as well. And uh, mostly fours and a couple fives in there uh, from today it looks like. And generally active all across this region right now. Um, I don't have the Earthquake 3D globe pulled up right now. But uh, I'm on a different computer. Uh, live stream should be running at home. Hopefully, if not, I can uh, adjust it and fix it if it goes down. But uh, things are getting quite active out here, folks. Look at all that earthquake activity across the plate boundary. Uh, up here to the north, most of these are very deep earthquakes here into the Kuro Kamachaka and maybe the portion of the uh, northern end there of the Japan Trench. That's a uh, also a little bit concerning. I'm gonna make sure that uh, hopefully this recorded correctly. I just noticed that it paused here when I did something uh, weird with the OBS system, but hopefully it's recording. Um, so this area also well overdue in terms of producing larger scale movement. It's been uh, quite a while since we've seen any mega quake activity out here. Deeper activity, uh, a lot of adjustment going on here across the uh, Taiwan area. Uh, just, just be on guard out there. That's something that is uh, brewing out here across the western areas of the uh, Pacific Plate and adjacent plate there in the in the uh, Taiwan area. Uh, west Coast region, handful of earthquakes across the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Really not seeing any major swarming going on out here across the area for now. Uh, the Bay Area looks fairly quiet. Northern California as well. Trimmer, let's go check out the Trimmer map here tonight and see what we have or at least this afternoon. I uh, got about 173 epicenters, although this is from yesterday. And it uh, looks like mainly underneath the uh, central coast here of Oregon 
into the Cascadia subduction zone, uh, some of the deeper levels down there. Uh, into Yellowstone National Park, it looks like a handful of smaller quakes here. It looks like three from yesterday. Let's double check that, see what's going on here. From the Yellowstone uh, overview site, really not seeing anything of major concern. This right here looks like some outside interference locally to this seismograph station. I'm really not seeing that reading pop up on any of the other seismograph stations. Otherwise, that could be a signal of a big earthquake or maybe some type of magma movement in the area. But this is uh, something local to that seismograph station, more than likely some uh, outside interference, but uh, not a whole lot of earthquake activity. There's the uh, some of the smaller earthquake activity from yesterday and late last night. Let's go back here to the uh, USGS map, see if anything else major is going on here. Uh, a handful of earthquakes across the eastern portion of the country. Although um, nothing of major concern. Looks like a couple more earthquakes there around New Jersey. Zooming in here shows about three in the last 24 hours. Uh, Puerto Rico area, fairly quiet. A handful of earthquakes there. Uh, New Zealand. Really not seeing anything showing up here across the New Zealand map. But uh, let me go check this real quick from the GeoNet servers and see what's going on. Two days ago, though, 2.3 far as their all magnitudes go. Um, you know, there's always going to be some earthquake activity out there in that region. Most of this looks like hours ago, very small earthquake activity. Uh, so not a whole lot going on. Still seeing some deeper activity though underneath the North Island, New Zealand area. Uh, far as the Iceland activity goes, let's see if um, anything has changed up there. Uh, it's going to be this right here. For the Iceland earthquake map, got about 39 earthquakes. Doesn't look like anything of major concern uh, across the Grindavik area down here. Not uh, seeing any major earthquakes swarming for now. Of course, a couple days ago we did have that uh, a pretty moderate, decent sized earthquake out here, 5.4 across this area of Iceland. Really haven't seen any effects going on. Uh, or any after effects from that earthquake for now. All right, uh, far as space weather activity, we're looking at uh, a handful of earthquakes out there in the area, or earthquakes, <laughs> solar flares. Um, say hi, Missy Mimi's. How's it going, guys? Missy Mimi's back here in the background, just kind of taking a break here from traveling. Uh, we'll get over uh, on what's going on here with us at the end of this video. Uh, far as um, sunspots, well, there's quite a few of them out here. Noticing this large active region drifting further and further out here across the western limb. Here in a couple days, this will no longer be a concern as it will be out of sight, out of mind. And we are left with literally maybe a couple weak areas to watch. Now, let's bring up the flaring activity uh, where we did see, looks like a couple M flares overnight. Uh, kind of crackling up here a little bit overnight with some low-grade M-flare activity. But since then, we have di died down here in the afternoon. And uh, the majority of that activity is coming from 3656, 3638. Uh, so that's going to be uh, these areas here, 3638. 3656 is going to be a new region out here. Uh, from this view, let's see what we got for the newest angle. Yeah, there's a little bit of growth here in this area, also back behind it. You know, a little bit closer inspection does show uh, this area, I've shown a little bit of complexity, but uh, maybe up here as well. But once this area disappears off the uh, visible disk, the threat level will go down in terms of the flaring potential. Right now, 99% chance for a C flare, and flare at 75. X flare around 20% chance or so. And yes, there are numerous sunspots out there on the sun. All right, Storm Prediction Center out here. A uh, little bit of thunderstorm activity. I'm looking out my window right now. I got a little thunderstorm activity out here across the Colorado area. I'm just outside of the uh, Aspen, Colorado region. And uh, gonna be out here uh, in this area for a little while, looking at some uh, geology stuff and also, we'll be watching this uh, severe weather potential as we head into 
Uh, it's going to be the day four, day five outlook, and even day six, I believe, right here. We got three days of severe weather potential as we head Thursday, Friday. Um, that's going to be Thursday right here. I wish it would stay on there. There we go. Thursday, um, Friday, and then Saturday, and then maybe even on Sunday, but uh, predictability right now is pretty low. But if you look at these locations, it's almost all over the same area. Right here across northern Texas into the southern plains area, Oklahoma, Kansas. These areas are looking at the potential of some severe weather here. Again, beginning on Thursday, there's going to be a pretty awesome dry line here. And uh, looking at uh, the main threat will probably be some very large hail along with some wind damage. Uh, there's also the threat of tornado activity. We'll have to watch this, see what they put out here for tornado probability. I think that's going to be more likely on Friday as we'll have a little bit better um, setup in terms of the wind shear. Uh, so we'll check back on that as we get a little bit closer, but uh, definitely some severe weather potential out here in this area um, over the next few days. All right, folks, I am going to jump off here. Um, if anything else pops up here in terms of major activity, there's another five pointer just coming in as we speak uh, a few minutes ago it looks like 5.2 you know this is uh definitely not normal to see uh, this amount of earthquake activity ramp up um weeks later following the big seven pointer that struck here you know 20 days ago uh, it just, it, it's not typical to see uh, this type of setup out here so be on guard be on watch the last big earthquake in terms of big potential back in 1920 with that eight pointer that struck out here 8.2 so um, we'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening I just wanted to get uh, a little bit more thorough update out here and uh, keep an eye out here across this area we'll see you guys back out here later tonight stay safe out there